not really sure. We just sell it and it goes somewhere. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, morning. Back to cut. Uh, I should finish during the day. We'll see how it goes. Dad's gone by and yeah, the last couple days has been acting a little goofy. Changed some fuel filters, changed air filters. Well, blew out the air filter, I guess. Um, they were new beginning of this year, so I don't think there's any problem with that. It's need to be cleaned out. But uh, it's still losing power once in a while. You cut and find just engine RPM drops. This is our last hilly field. That'll be boring after this. <laughs> so you kind of get into this and then wonder what you're doing. And then all of a sudden you get on the flat stuff and get out of the hill and you're like, oh, this sucks. But <laughs> it's definitely, it's a challenge. Comes in these hills, but it's fun. I've been enjoying it. Anyway, you'll see. Seems to still be acting up, so we got to check on the way out. See if we can figure out why that thing's slowing down. Now that is quite the rock pile. So, field question of the day. Grain tank, oh, three quarters of the way up the window. Can I make it up that hill in second gear? Or will I have to shift into first? Let's go find out. I didn't climb it over there because I was full. Well, three quarters full. I didn't want to carry the weight up the hill plus slide that weight all the way down the hill. Oh, I'm like shooting up this thing. 100% Oh, that bump. Now we're kind of stalling out a little bit, but only in the transmission. There it goes. Okay. That was what I was worried about. Was the high next that would just kind of stop. Yeah, we made it. We're back up at the top. There's Warren coming across, which hopefully that means he's fixed. Okay, you want to type this computer up to your combine and check the fuel pressure on the pump. Well, Dad's combine's only putting out about 20,000 psi. Tim's combine's doing 26, 29, so it's crazy high pressure. So then I tried the new pump, and it worked. Fired up, ran smooth. They're gonna hook up the computer just see what rail pressure and everything is. If it's up above the 20,000 that it was putting out before, which I'm sure it is. But uh, yeah, you know we got it fixed. So derm, all but done. All better. Seems to be. The uh, fuel pressure wasn't really any higher, but it wasn't jumping around, and it, it, yeah, it worked good all the way. 
pushed it hard. Good. Well, that's it for week five of harvest. Another, I don't know, 1,500 acres to go yet. Should be done by the next week, so. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is start of week six of harvest. We've got dirt on some trucks. We're gonna run these to the elevator and then we'll see where it goes from today. We have uh, some canola that got hailed on again, like a week or two ago. A week ago, I don't remember when it was. 23rd of July and today is September 3rd. So we're gonna get that adjusted. We're gonna get probably get a combine up there today and just kind of see what the moisture is on it. I really don't know what to do. We'll find out when we get there. Some of you have made mention of all the cracks in the windshield of this uh, teal truck. Uh, it's really not that bad. Uh, you know, technically, this right here is my field of view, and the cracks are over here. And Yes, it's annoying. No, it's not blocking my field of vision. No, it's not worth being changed. Yeah, someday it probably should be. And it will be at some point, but just not right now. Well, here at Columbia Grain, uh, east of Wolf Point. This one's called Casa Point. And uh, new elevator pit is going. They got a new scale over there. Still doing, using the same probe here, so I Spring wheat guys are coming in, probing, pulling through, and dumping over there. Durham is dumping in the old pit. So, over there, that's that huge million plus bushel flat storage they built. We showed that a few, a few months ago. So, they just gave me the green light to pull ahead to the next hopper to get probed. See the white tint out there? That's all hail damage compared to this edge right here where it's a little bit greener. Yeah, that's all shatter from that last hailstorm. Up there where those bins are, it took all the leaves off the irrigated cornfields up there. So pretty wild weather up here this year. There's two tornadoes over there in July. That's when the other end of this field got hailed out. And now in August, this side gets hailed. He's full. GPS. So the cart we just used, the Dodge set, we're there right away. To our location, there's our line. There comes the canola. So canola is an oil seed. Uh, can be used in canola oil, obviously, or I think a lot of ours gets turned into biofuel, uh, diesel fuel substitute or diesel fuel additive kind of thing. I'm not really sure. We just sell it and it goes somewhere. And we pay for it. So that works for me. Well, crud. Hmm. We were cutting canola. But uh, just this tiny little spot shower shut us down for a little bit. And I folded my bin boards down so it's losing GPS signal, then gets GPS signal, then loses GPS signal. Anyway, we 
are shut down for a little bit. Warren's still having issues with his combine, so I guess we'll maybe help him dig a little deeper. I don't know. Well, I'm just getting back to the field. Dumped uh, a load of canola at the bin this morning. Sun shining. A little, little bit of dew this morning. Well, a lot of dew this morning. And 40 degrees, so it definitely uh, feels like fall is setting in. So uh, we got some canola on the cart. We'll throw that on the teal truck and head right back to the bins and see uh, Dad and Tim are ready to start cutting by the time they get back. See if the canola has dried out enough or not. Getting fueled up. Still can't figure out Dad's combine. Oh, that was really rough. Oh my goodness. Well, well, what do we have here? CR 10.90 and the 62 foot, 61 foot. Macked out FD2. This will be hard. Well, the canola grinds on. It's gonna plug on here in a second. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Double hailed canola. Not that much fun. A lot of pods broken open. There's a little tiny building way down there. There's a white streak in front of that building. So right now I'm running about a nine to 10 bushel average. And when I get down there, I'm like three and a half to four bushel average because there's just no pods left. All right, this thing looks huge from the cab. And it is, I mean, it's wider than a lot of air seeders out there, 61 feet wide. It's wider than our new Brigo or our, our used Brigo we're getting. But it doesn't feel that wide running it. It contours really nice, just like the 50 foots do, like the 45s did. Um, does a nice job of cutting. Deeper belts, obviously. I think they're 50 inches on these and our 45 or 50 foot heads, like on that combine over there. I think those are 40 something inch wide belts. So they're, they are wider to take the more volume on this head. But yeah, it is doing a pretty good job. And I'm really liking the automation on the combine. Like obviously that's a every brand thing now, but our machines are old, er, older and do not have automation. So learning this system is pretty cool. It is making a cleaner sample than our red combines, but that's because this is taking care of itself and we're not playing with the settings as much on our machines. I did do something interesting here. See this yield, thinner, lighter yield? I adjusted my grain loss sensitivity down and it must have thrown that much more out than to change our yield that much. So it is working. All right, quick look at the sample. It is doing a fantastic job of cleaning. Yeah, I got it just, just full enough, holy smokes. I got all ladybugs. They're everywhere this year. I hope they're eating grasshoppers. But a uh, little bit of sprout damage in this the way it looks, and I'm gonna have some green count, but uh, that's just the way it is this year. Like you can see the results of the last hailstorm. We've got a lot of volunteer out here. We lost some bushels from that. Uh, let's see. Contour buddies. Those are the same as what we have on our 50s. These wider belts, I don't really see a whole lot different on this compared to our 50s. They're still the same series, FD2s. Do a little walk around here. They are the same from here to there in the center. The same center sections, they just have longer wings is what I'm told. So five and a half feet on each side. Uh, the machine, obviously it's way different. Two rotors compared to our single rotors on our machines. Uh, a lot of my moving parts, dual. Three thrashers on this. So there's like the return on the both sides, different spreaders, quite a bit different machines. It's a very similar cap. Different controls on the same cap. Not a fan of the headrest in here. I've never wanted to rest my head in I've mean, wanted to rest my head in combat, but it's not practical. And I can't see in the grain tank with it. Quite annoying. I would take it out if I had it in one of these combines.
kind of a short drill and clip. Only one battery. Battery was dying. Couldn't get the unload on the go on GoPro. I actually had to catch it as it's falling past the combine to keep, keep it from crashing. So really low. We even got we cut my finger a little bit. The blade did. I think I make a pretty good string trimmer. But uh, yeah, unloading on the go, it works with the uh, 50 foot head or 61 foot head. And I think they call it a 34 foot auger option which is what everyone's running on the 50 foot. So it's doable, which I want to have GPS and no screw ups, but I don't think we could quite get to the center of the cart with the factory configuration. I'm sure there's options to extend it. So my impressions of the 61 foot head, I don't see why we couldn't run them. I mean, this is a flatter field than normal. Most of our fields are fairly flat, except for our really hilly stuff. I don't know how it would work up there. I think it'd be all right though. Pulses might be a challenge, but canola and wheat, I think would be all right. Definitely would roll ahead of this header on everything, just for that reason, maybe. I don't know. New Holland Combine. I don't really know enough about them or what I'm doing. It's working pretty good, though. I mean, I'm satisfied with, I mean, look at the sample. Pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that. Canola's hard to clean because it's so light. I want to see automation on our Hopefully we'll run 9250 someday, and then we'll have an idea on how to do a canola that way. So, but yeah, nice combine, no complaints. Um, it has, where did I see that? It's got like 30 hours on, 75 hours on the combine, on the engine, 30 hours on the threshing. So this is a new machine that they're running around demoing. That's my take on it. Nice combine, pretty similar to a case on the cab. Not 100% the same though, so, but working good. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but don't forget, farm hard, pray harder. See you next video.